Welcome, friends. It's time to elevate and thrive. And today we have a fantastic show lined up for you, especially if you've been injured and you want to learn more about training with and around those injuries. On the show today, of course, I have my co-host, Dr. Angela Yegley. Yeah. Some say the greatest living practitioner of <laughs> naturopathic medicine in Edmonds. Yeah, of course. Yes, of I course. believe it's true. And, I believe yeah. it is true. Also, Dr. <laughs> Annie Armstrong here from a head to toe spine and sport therapy, our favorite and most, I don't know, the most comprehensive chiropractor that I have ever met. And chiropractor seems too small of a word to describe the extent of your medical knowledge and practice. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. I, I, absolutely. I do think <laughs> I do agree with that. I yeah. do think that is a true yes. statement. And finally, we have Kimo Cole here, owner of Anvil Fitness. And Kimo is a celebrity superstar trainer who is here to share with us some incredible insights into training with and around injuries. Hello. Welcome, Kimo. Thank now, you Kimo, you, so you guys have all kind of worked together in some capacity. Now, Di Annie, Kimo, you guys have been working together for a long time. Yeah, about 17 years. Yes. Yeah. In that you've been working with chemo through kind of Dr. Yeah. Annie's recommendation, That's specifically right. around this topic yeah. of how to transition you back into working out with some in prior injuries and past injuries. Right, right. For yes, for a few months now, I've been training, and it's been it's been fantastic, and and uh, has really helped. And why I really wanted to dive into this topic today because I feel like um, if you have an old injury or or just an area of pain, or I think Barry, you've mentioned you call it like a hot spot, something like that, it can be easy to avoid avoid working out or training of any kind because you're like, well, I have this pain, so I must need to be like, I maybe need to avoid working out. I need to be sedentary. And I feel like that is the exact wrong thing to do, right? So really wanted to talk about like, what are the techniques that these two amazing people have that, you know, help move you out of that space correctly? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I think that's, it's so important because if we stop moving, you know, that's when we really get into trouble. Yeah, hundred percent. The system was designed to be loaded. So you look at the car in the parking lot, at the at the kind of vacant house, or not even vacant house. They just kind of don't mow the lawn, but they got extra cars, and then the car sits and sits, and then the the bramble starts to overtake it, and the earth absorbs it and pulls it down. And so it's just the the human system was designed to be loaded um, with all these different vectors and 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 gravitational forces because we're we're trying to navigate within these within these things. And so if you're not participating within the real world that you're actually physically existing in, it's going to win. You're going to be bumped. Uh, there's a car like that in my neighborhood. I walk past <laughs> it every day. It has been fully consumed. I mean, the oh all around God. it yeah. and the whole yard. And I'm always like, I, I always play this game like we're in the dog walk. Like, I wonder who lives there. Is it a witch? Yeah. Is it like Hansel and Gretel? <laughs> Will she eat a small child if I bring the crumbs in? But uh -huh. the car is totally consumed. And I do think, you know, if we look at the body, definitely that move it or lose it kind of mentality uh, or use it or lose it, right? Like comes into play. But I think – oftentimes what happens is we're, we, we hit some kind of an injury, whether it's an overuse, acute injury, whatever, and, yeah, then we stop doing stuff. All the time it, it had to tow, you know, we have see people come in who have been told by their medical professional to stop doing a particular thing, yeah. right? Like, like bend over. Yeah, oh. like don't pick anything up mm -hmm. or don't, you know, don't run or don't lift squat. or don't. Or don't it, squat. Don't That's squat. That's the biggest thing, especially yeah, for, don't you know, don't, you know, knee injury, hip injury, low back injury, don't squat. And we like to say if you can't squat, you can't get on the pot. Pretty right. much. That's because it's true. Like you yeah. can't or you off. Can't get down. You oh, can drop and down or off. <laughs> right. Unless you got um, handlebars. Unless you have like handlebars. A, like a pulley and that's, system. Yeah. Rope. Yeah. Yeah. Rope climbs. Rope climbs. So it's CrossFitters. Yeah. They'll be okay because they can rope climb off that thing. <laughs> they can but. rope climb off the pot. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's just so imperative to keep moving. And I love that you said chemo. How to move multi-directionally. You know, when I when I first started personally training with with you, I was I was pretty. In, in, in a bad way. And I, I still remember Kimo saying to me, I was going away on a trip. I think it was going camping. And, and you're giving, you gave me specific instructions to do some boulder lifting um, while I was camping. I'm like, I want you to do this. You just find a boulder, do some deadlifts, do some Oh, you're looking for some, some ways to that. add fitness to this trip. You weren't destroyed at that time. I acutely. wasn't destroyed at that time, but you yeah. were adding, you were adding fitness. Uh. And, and what, and what I mean by bringing this up is how you can bring it in, in all areas of your life. Like you don't have to be like, go to the gym and no. go on the fix machines and no. all this sort of stuff like that. Movement has come, can come in many different ways. But the important part is to just to have someone guide you when you're coming out of an injury to guide you through those early phases of moving, moving, moving multi-directionally, multi-planar, refiring your, your, your system, really, so that we don't just compensate for our injury, keep moving, but in a dysfunctional pattern. 
Yeah, there's a lot of minutia that's kind of involved. Yes. You know, so, you know, I don't know. Think of the colorful illustration as we're uh, sci-fi space travelers and we've landed on a planet we've, and we've found this spacecraft. And it's kind of it's this, this cool tech where it's organic and robot and all this kind of stuff. And they're clicking all the switches and they always know how to start it. But so they start it and then it starts to boot up and all the systems light up and come online. It's just like, we have to get our systems online. Then we have to be able to do a system check. And so it's all about figuring out what's appropriate movement at that time. Mm -hmm. Whether somebody's acute or has an old injury, most everybody does. We're all living athletes. Mm -hmm. You can be an active athlete and go out and bash and do, or you're, um, you're the, the, the mom just like crushing it at home, battling on that battleground. I mean, that one's even worse, you know? And so tying all those things together, looking at it, it's all about creating and maintaining these lo- different levels of ambient activation through the structures so that we can keep things sitting where they need to be so then biomechanically we can move clean. So when you're coming off of a, an old injury or an acute injury, there's going to be disruption. So the, the team's not working right. Um, one guy's still kind of hurt a little bit, and then this other guy's highly distracted, and this other guy's, he's looking at his phone. And so it takes a team to do things. One movement is never performed by a single muscle. It's a, it's a, it's a system right, of opposition within the body. So we we're talking about that. You guys were talking about that in your earlier one, you know. My back hurts is probably because your psoas is locked up. You know, we're reciprocal of ourself. And so learning how to get, generate or put the right kind of input into your structure, the central nervous system is going to sort it, but then we have to help sort it certain ways because it'll kind of start talking, you know, it might get some bad code in that whole thing. So that bad code, so that's within this movement pattern. So we get disruption with movement because a couple guys are just not with the program yet. And it ends up always being about sequencing. Mm -hmm the sequence of events get out of order, like in a squat. So you'll see guys, you watch them from the, from the side there, and they they bend at the knee first, then kind of hip hinges, and then forward extremity, just forward folds, like they just got a book thrown on the back of their head, you know. So reprogramming, the hip has to move first, then the knee, then the ankle, and start looking at geometry and angles and loading. You know, so even though if you've been training for a while, you've been an athlete, every, and especially of all the, the recreational athletes are like either, why do I need a coach? Or they're like, I'm not good enough to need a coach. But then you look at, well, then there's the major league best of the best of the best. And they have multiple coaches, and that's why they are the best. You are not doing what they're doing. You're not moving the same way they move, right? So mm-hmm. get help. So it's because it's even with a practitioner, they can give you this information, but you have to figure out how to find the wiring to the imaginary light switch to activate the structure as we're trying to do. So it's like an EQ on, a, on this big stereo, and we have to control the highs and the lows. And so sometimes we've got too much high going, and so if you go and just start bashing, that thing's just going to get flared so that it was already too activated, where you didn't even know that probably what should be happening is we just got a little deactivation, but what we need is this opposing structure to get activation, then it balances out the whole chain. So then we can start actually moving biomechanically, then we can start doing fitness. So, so many times, it's really funny, people come to me, I've, I, I guess I've had a kind of a nickname of fixing break, broken CrossFitters and different things, or a lot of my, my mean client base leans a little bit older with, with old pre-existing spinal and hip and stuff like that. So people come to me, get them online, and then after five or so weeks, you know, they start feeling, oh, I got this, right? Yet still through 10 weeks, biomechanically, your, your hip sequencing in a basic squat movement with no loading is incorrect. And then they're like, oh, I, I can do this on my own, and I'm out, you know? So people, you need to understand the timeline of being able to understand your kinesthetic sense and, and understand yourself inwardly is a lifelong task 10 sessions isn't going to do anything. It'll kind of, it could o- start opening some doorways. But really, it's the minutia over time. It's the loading over time. That means consistent movement. So loading is loading. So Buff Bill, he, he's strong, so he can do a whole bunch of stuff. He can squat 600, bench 5, and na na nah, you know, And that's not everybody's goal. But it's still about volume, consistent volume over time. That's the formula of fitness. If you do that, you can get better. Everybody has their own wheelhouse, right? If I showed up at your guys' works, 
I would annoy you when you're giving me orders trying to help and do stuff because it's not my wheelhouse. I don't live there. Like, draw 60, 50 cc's of blah, 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 and stick it in his... <laughs> I figure it out. It'd be yeah. Well, yeah, 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 I'm a quick yeah, study, yeah, but... I could tell you, yeah, yeah. I'm a quick study. Like, here, here you go. We'll put you to work. <laughs> but that's, of that's which, a big part of that. some staff in you, you know, maybe... <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, I know. I could use some help. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we could set up some well, fitness I, coming inside I, here. Yep. I feel like I wanted to, yep. you know, just share sure, my yeah. story with Kimo really yeah. quickly. Sorry, that was a I huge tangent. Like I just no, were, it's uh, wonderful. Break it off. Yeah. yeah, you're never going to stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, were in the, you were in the passion zone. <laughs> yeah. I can tell when the muse is speaking to someone. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to me. <laughs> so, so I feel like I was in that place of, like, I'm so used to having my own program at home. Like, I run. Like, I do my own workouts, my HIIT workouts. And I feel like I'm just not good enough yet to get a trainer like I was falling into right, that right, right yeah and I have this tweaky like left knee pain from an old ski injury that's kind of popping back up and I'm like oh I need but as a physician like I need to address that first before I can go and work out with someone it's and like so, doing your hair for your hairdresser right exactly so Dr. Annie very nicely so again getting like having her what I needed to do is get aligned be adjusted I needed to have my soft tissue worked on and then actually then what I found so valuable with chemo is that actually really helped my knee pain by correcting my form. And again, yeah. I thought even looking in the mirror, I'm like, oh, I it looks good. You know, I'm doing this lunge correctly. Oh, my God. Like just a few tweaks and then thinking like, no, release these specific muscles. And it's like, it's amazing. Yeah, super Life, subtle things like yeah, foot pressure, big toe pressure. Absolutely. Shifting um, pressure from Your heels pointing the wrong yeah. way a little bit. Toes to heels. Yeah. And so then, uh, then uh, but, uh, you know, getting good coaching, and then you can then you can run with it, you know, but still you're going to want to have some help. Yeah. yeah. What is that? Is that kind of the, the process that you see, Annie, in terms of your, you know, where kind of chemo comes into being like that next step on that? you know, that, that progression ladder to get a person back into moving correctly and properly and getting back into a place where they can really pursue their fitness. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, our, our job really is to unstick joints and make the muscles so they can be programmed again. Um, because when muscles are really injured, they're not ready for programming. You know, they're full of scar tissue. They're acutely injured. Um, you know, there's a lot of inflammation. So there's a lot of, you know, the body's not quite ready. So our work, um, <clears throat> besides rebuilding the muscles, is to start that basic, basic rehabilitation pattern, get the core working again, the diaphragm working, you know, get the basic elements stabilized. But then to really get that movement diversification, um, strengthening, reprogramming, all those little acute points that chemo was discussing, that's when chemo really comes into play. And he's taken so many of my patients and brought them into just another form of strength endurance. Um, it's been, it's been really a pleasure over the years. Well, I think about my brother-in-law, Tim, and he's been in to see you a ton of times. And every time I'm hanging out with Tim, or we, he's like rolling around on the floor on his foam roller, <laughs> lacrosse ball in it. Like, I'm serious. Like, we'll yeah. be over for dinner. And he's yeah. like Perfect. rolling around on the floor because yeah. he's like self-care maniac. Yeah. And then we've been getting him to come over occasionally for our Sunday boot camps that we do in my garage gym. And, and he still has a lot of pain and ability to move or, or movement issues. And as I, you were describing, like, coming online to mm. be able to turn those systems on, getting his body being able to kind of coordinate or re-coordinate and fire together and move together, I realized, oh, that's the missing piece for Tim is, is that, you know. And even as you were going through and speaking about it, you know, I just think about um, for most people, they don't go through a period of time where they have, Pro prolonged and sustained and specific, you know, coaching that is progressive movement coaching that takes them intentionally from one point to another point over a prolonged period of yeah, time. Yeah, I grew up playing sports for super long ski races through college. All kinds right, of stuff like exactly. That. Where you're working with a professional over time, not yeah. like a day yeah, or an hour or something. Yeah, 10 visits is not enough. I mean, really, you need to really think about pro reprogramming 610 muscles, right? I mean, all the diversity of movement. Totally. But it's a and start, you know, and, and I would say, I mean, like you can probably do quite a bit in that time with a person and then depending, like they can go further. But, um, I think one of the things like you were describing and Angela is that like, yeah, you, you didn't have any of that. Right. And so no. you got disproportionate benefit too, just in, with when you started seeing chemo right away in terms of your movement patterning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I really, well, it's so amazing that, you know, what to know, like you don't know what you don't know. 
you know, right. and and especially because I feel like there's so much information out there online, so easy to either self-diagnose, self-treat, you know. Oh yeah, tons of gym science too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's getting better, video. Yeah, and um, and I'm realizing, you know, again, been working out for about three months, is that I absolutely like. Of course, chemo is still correcting me. You know, it's still, <laughs> still like, well, you're not, yeah, let's not do that. I, you know. So here, the kind of like part of that. So everybody's wound up with tension, and that's just them because of what you've been doing until now. now. Then there's subtle variances in actual biomechanics, hip shape, structure. So people, everybody is more slightly different than they are exactly the same. There's organs in a slightly different places for some people. I hear like craziness like that, but um, getting. It's, it's like a little bit about the minutiae. You said learning the biomechanics of it and trying to understand it. It's also about being able to, to replicate that, you know, over time and, and remember. So it's, it's, it's not when a person comes in and they're not doing a movement correctly, it's not because it's a cognitive wrestling match. It's because their built-in tension is breaking down system, systemic movement and throwing you around. So you have to be able to clean up the chain before it can start to kind of move. And learning to understand that is, is the biggest part of it. Then you can get those tools to be more self-caring and more and more and have more self-efficacy in, in doing all your workouts and doing your global movement. But, but still, there's like this, all this super misty stuff that you, a person really needs to think about. So, you know, training, I keep my business small. It's in a very intimate setting. And there's, there's a lot of talking about cognition, uh, ideology, uh, perception, because all those things affect your soft tissue and your structure and the way that it goes. Um, and so training with me is, is more. Everybody that trains with me, they come because they want more. You can get less everywhere. You can get less that costs more everywhere. Like I'm garage sale prices for what you, you get. Change that. Raise the prices You're right. after this podcast. <laughs> Raise the prices. <laughs> tell everybody add but, zero to the end. But yeah, so so getting so getting that, you know, constant keeping you on the path when from that other person that's just a little bit more ahead of you because there's you want to find the person still learning still trying to figure out stuff and so excited to share their discoveries within their human systems to help you learn how to tap in and understand your human system more so many people are so disconnected from this thing that we're moving around and there they're, they, there's you wonder how, how some people make it through your day but um and and on so many levels on so many levels. And so I think one of the biggest things for, for f wellness fitness a person could do is really try to take this opportunity to look in introspectively and try to figure out who's in the mirror and, and, and who you keep trying to keep in that box. You thought you were coming here for some advice on movement. <laughs> Oh, yeah, let's talk about what movement. Sorry. Yeah, Just put that mirror in front of you, and we're going to give so you some true. advice on your soul. Yeah. I mean, but you have to you look are. at all the pieces, right? It's all those yeah, pieces. I had, a, I had a bad pieces. elbow injury, uh, and coming into it, it was an injury that I have sustained before. So I like to skate pools, and usually I skate padless, and I've slammed from the top to the bottom in eight-foot pools straight to my elbow on concrete, got up, laughed, and shook it off. That was in the last 10 years. I hit my elbow snowboarding on, on a snow berm and it turned into the hugest craziest thing that i've ever seen and the lead into it talking with dr annie and, and dr Le uh, yegley was considering the components of my personal life so i've been under a huge amount of personal strain wrestling with a whole bunch of stuff so my whole ambient level is just amplified now every single input that my that my body received it amplified everything so my minor injury turned into a major injury my self-treatment you get the, you want the deactivation so you can move the joint and start getting mobility and but the the level of deactivation was even amplified i got like way too much and created another situation like that you know so your 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 heart and where you are uh, matters and affects everything and you need to also consider that in your lifting and your workouts so uh we can have a general game plan when we're going but we have to think of consider what who 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 we're talking to each individual appointment 
because it's the same person's form, but it's a different person each time. And what specifically do they need as these practitioners? What do they need? How do they treat them each, each time? But then like as a trainer for me, how am I going to load them? Because it's all about input in the body. As the person coming, doing, participating and, and doing exercise, you want to consider your headspace, and especially if you're doing your own jam, because now you have to really gauge where you're at. Because you can, you can just hurt yourself really easily, or you can build and nurture and gain more strength strength through these injuries, through these different things that seem to be setbacks. You get a full paradigm shift and then boom, you just learn so much more about how your system actually works, how I can treat my soft tissue that much more. You know, we saying like, go to the doctor. I'm saying, go to the doctor, go to the doctor, go to the doctor. But a big part of it is learning to take care of yourself as long as possible with as much as possible. But like on your leading thing, you're saying, you know, what should a first person do? Immediate care. I've had a f rotator cuff strain. I got the bat phone so I can get in in like in 30 minutes, drive up there, get immediately released when this thing's ropey and freaking out, and then all of a sudden, fix, boom. I'm back to, to lifting. You know, not everybody has the you access. Think most people probably wait too long. Though. Precisely. So, yeah, oh, I don't, it'll get better. Let's rub some dirt on. It. And so, what happens is it locks in, like locks in in certain situations. So, it's about. It's so, it's so multifaceted, right? right? And so intuitive, but try to do a little bit on your own. But if it's something, like, you know when you're so broke off, like, I got to go to the doctor because, like, blood squirting out or something. There's a couple levels down where, like, okay, I'm super messed up, but I think, you know, because you've exercised for so long on me that I can self-treat and I can get myself out of it. And I have for a long time in a lot of situations. But, but there's, there's the time comes, yeah. when, and, and so now, you know, um, getting treated in ways and exploring ways that I'd never had because I finally have the opportunity because I'm messed up enough. And that's what's so cool is the cool thing that that's happening here uh, with Dr. Yeagley, like these, what was it the O2 treatment? Oh, yeah, ozone therapy. Ozone therapy. Ozone therapy. Yeah. That's a good one. I was wondering mm -hmm. if you're going to bring ozone up. That's oh my yeah, gosh, that yeah. stuff is no, money. It's amazing. Yeah, it's straight it's up amazing. So, so knowing when what sort of treatment you need. Sometimes you know it can be t done from the outside, but sometimes you need that exorcism from the inside. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Or or an, a reach to the inside. Yeah. So that would be that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think as you were kind of describing and talking about just that self awareness. I mean, I think that's one of the things that most of us, you know, lack or have blind spots. Even when we have been doing something for a long time, it's an area of passion. Um, you can get disproportionate benefit from going and finding somebody who can help you see the things that you no longer see and, and yeah. help you identify those areas that are, are areas that maybe you've just become so accustomed to that yeah. they don't even come to mind, right? You don't even realize that you're working within limitations that are self-imposed, not because you want to you know, be limited, but just because you don't see them or think about them anymore. So I think there's that side of things. I've been doing it so long, I don't think I need it, but you actually could probably get like a lot of benefit from going and seeing, you know, coming down to Anvil and uh, getting some some help and some coaching. And the flip side, where you're kind of getting started on something and you realize, okay, um, I need Refresher. some help. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I need some help to get started. So whether you're the beginning or the end, and certainly if you're in the middle, there's opportunities. I think not only to you know change how you move, but also expand your sense of awareness around your body, how it functions, how it's so interconnected. Um, and work, I work a little bit with a movement guru, but also also someone who's going to, I think, bring you maybe into a deeper connection with yourself through movement, which ultimately I think is a powerful thing. I mean, if you look at many of the spiritual practices that have a base in physical movement, uh, like you know, I'm thinking of like a yoga now, not like a mm -hmm. not like a sweat yoga, but like as it was traditionally kind of you know put together, you could absolutely connect deeper with who you are and your purpose and your meaning and your passion through Find your that physicality. flow state. Yeah, through flow. And I think you need to. I mean, I think you need to. It's tapping into humanity. Everybody's losing, forgetting, lost, or losing the capacity to tap into humanity. So, f into humanity. So, fight for it. Yeah, and use your physicality to do that. Yeah. You know, this is where the flogging, I think, really comes in. You just. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's no. This is a great. This is a great thing. So let's talk about more about movement. That's, so that I, works for Barry. We don't recommend it, really. I'm I'm all for flogging because. <laughs> right. Okay. Head to toes. Also checking out on that right, topic. Right. No. It's, no. It, it's all about basically. It's all about input. So let's talk about movement. Let's talk about these different things because I'm like off here in, in in my flying saucer. Uh, but so basically, it's all about different kinds of input into the structure. So flogging is something that that actually happens. You use it, but just in a smaller a deal, right? You yeah. know. So you're you're trigger. Pointing with like a, yeah. a 
a ball on a flexible stick. It's a thwacker. Dun, 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 dun. So it's that input. You can tap with your hands. You shoot it with a gun. You trigger point with a ball. You stretch. You move. It's all different kinds of input. So you continue want to be generating different sorts of input through movement. And then you want to think, oh, now what is our goals? There's a thousand different goals, but the generally the, you know, let's try to be, see if we can make it through a day without destroying ourselves and getting destroyed. So then looking at your, your daily movements, you, if you have proper biomechanics in your squat, when you squat down to pull weeds or do whatever you're doing a squat, not a forward bend at your back. And you, now you're turning your daily stuff into actual fitness and you're cleaning up your daily movements so you don't get hurt doing dumb things and then you're getting stronger so that whole it's just so it intertwined right, there. right yeah, there that's it it's taking it from the gym and translating it into your everyday life absolutely I, seeing I the landscape that's, that's the of the gym inside. in the absolutely. natural world yeah so chemo if, if a person wants to you know if they're like intrigued by all this and this is like ringing a bell and getting them to kind of think like maybe i could use some help what what would be the next steps Texting me, you? I'm a yeah. texter. No, okay. I have a website <laughs> actually. Is that the yeah. step? Kind of go check it out. Anvil Fitness. Yeah, anvil-fitness.com. Okay. Um, I've been lazy about rebuilding it after the, the rebuilding my gym from one site to another, so the address is different where it is. So it is actually in a secret, undisclosed location. So I'm working with all these marketers, and they're yeah. like, Kimo, you can do so much better for yourself. You could be as busy as you want, and, and all these different things. And the thing, I, and I was thinking about is when I, I, I came from a big bo big box, and I would inherit clients off the floor out of the sales pit and my then my opportunity was to flip and train i was good at it so i did well a lot but the times that it didn't really kind of really resonated with me and so now in my secret undisclosed fitness lair you have to be vetted to get to me yeah you can't just show up it's all about referrals Right, right, right. So we don't want any, any just anybody showing up. Right, you got to be the homie, you okay. know. But I like meeting people too. All right, so you can't basically work with you, but <laughs> you, if you, you wanted have to, yeah. you could go. You, you could come him. and see Annie. <laughs> you could come see me. I, yeah, is right. Ange, <laughs> you're probably not qualified yet as a I, as a, I can't as a train referral. you, but I can. Oh, I, can, I think can I refer people to you? Keep no, I, no, you can totally yeah. find me. I love referrals, but I I I love it off of referrals. I think I am called. I think I've made it. You think you are? I think you're ready to refer. Absolutely. Yes, but I have a yeah, I have a phone number two zero six three three four zero four six nine. I'm a texter. You can email me awesome. at shred it chemo at gmail.com mm -hmm. s h r e d i t k i m o at gmail we'll put all this in the show links if you want to send it over yeah, to I, would, me. I can throw some of this absolutely that'd be great link. totally yeah. uh, actually i could use some help I, you know it's just kind of a funny spin i like to put on it but um but yeah i train with intention it's 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 there's a lot more going on uh, hanging out with Clearly. me than is just going somewhere else. I love it. Right on. Thank Wonderful. you for coming yes. and sharing some philosophy and some wisdom and some passion with us around movement. Uh, I definitely walked away with some awesome stuff and it was a blast, dude. So thanks for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Kimo. Dr. Annie, for Thank being you. here. Dr. Annie. Dr. Angela, thanks for hosting us. Oh, Absolutely. Here at Thank this you so much. Bunch. Most magnificent Sage in Great Medicine Clinic. It's my favorite. There you are also product. magnificent. Thank you. I just want to say you that. Thank so much. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, everybody out there, we'll talk to you on the next show. Until then, elevate and thrive.